Good morning, St. John's. Uh, I'm Pastor Jeff Dadisman, and this service is being recorded at St. John's United Methodist Church here in Davenport. I want to welcome those that are, are joining us for worship online this morning, and I start with just a couple items that I'd like you to know. Um, on January 18th, that Monday of next weekend, uh, the Blessing Box Drive will be happening at Channel 6. Uh, the, the TV station down the street here on Brady Street will be the host site for the drive-by drop-off, and I will be with the volunteers from St. John's on site there at noon, from noon to one of that day, and please consider bringing some cleaning supplies. Uh, items uh, specifically requested are in our newsletter and in the email that you'll receive from us on Fridays, and you can respond on that day. We'd love to see you. Also, we have a special offering for Kids Against Hunger, and if you'd like to respond to that, uh, go to our website and you can make an online gift there. Next Wednesday, uh, January 13, I invite you to consider joining our Zoom study. We're going to be following uh, The Chosen, and that's a popular video series on uh, Jesus calling his disciples and uh, it came out last Easter, and, and we're going to go through those episodes each Wednesday. And that would be a chance for you to grow spiritually and connect with some others that are doing a new thing here in the new year. And just uh, want to put that on your radar and invite you to consider that. Uh, maybe you've not done a small group before. Uh, the Zoom study option, we, we get to have conversation and we get to, to learn together. And it's a way to connect with some others during this um, time of isolation and, and winter, um, consider that possibility, if you will. This morning for worship, we conclude our, our series of uh, Believing What We Sing, and Pastor Jay will be uh, delivering the message, and I would invite you to, to tune in your hearts for worship, and, and let's um, receive what the musicians have prepared for us this day, and let's worship with all of our hearts. Good morning, St. John's. We're glad you joined us today. Um, what a year, man. Uh, 2020 has been uh, something different. But, hey, it's 2021 now. We've got a fresh start. We've got a new shot at doing something amazing and great. Um, I just ask that we stand up, shake it off a little bit. Let's, let's knock the dust off our boots. Um, and let's look forward to what uh, God's got planned for us. Um, I just thank you guys for being with us. Uh, if you haven't yet, take a chance to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Um, we're still trying to hit that mark on YouTube. 100 subscribers so we can uh, get access to a few new things and, and hopefully bring you more content. So, uh, guys, thanks for being here with us. And why don't we stand up and worship God this morning, okay? Here we go. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave up to the sky, Lord. I lift your name on. church you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave up to the sky Lord I lift your name on Sky 
and happy new year. But let's go ahead and um, start this new year out in prayer. We come now to the time in which we lift our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we are so thankful for your presence in our lives. As we reflect on the ways you have blessed us through your saving grace, we also know that there are some who do not know this grace forgiveness, and love that can only be found in you. So, Father, we pray that we might be empowered by you this morning to guide others into seeking you. This past week, we welcomed in a new year. Lord, as we look forward to all of what this new year has to offer, renew our hearts and refresh our souls. We thank you for this time and space that you have provided so that we can gather and worship to bring glory to you and feel the warmth of the fellowship as the body of Christ. We pray that your hand would protect us and bring us peace. And while we are so thankful, we are also very aware of the need for a Savior as we hear of one heartache after another in the news, within our communities, and of those who are lifted in our prayer bookmark today. God, you are the ultimate healer and comforter, and we come to you with our hearts eyes, and minds fixed on you, recognizing the need for your gift of peace. Calm our worries, anxieties, and fears, Lord. We need you. Father God, be with Pastor Jay this morning as he delivers the message you have given him to share. Open our hearts to receive it and guide our thoughts to be prepared to share the message of your good news. And God, I know there are things on our hearts that I cannot put into words, so we lift them to you now in this time of silent reflection and confession. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayers. Lord, thank you for loving us despite ourselves and offering the best gift anyone could ever receive, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this gift, let us gather together in the words that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, it is time for our children's message. So if you're with me, go ahead and give me an air high five. Awesome. Thanks for being with me this morning. Thanks for gathering this morning as well. And thanks for all of you who are joining us online as well. It's great to be together here in the new year. Today, our message is kind of following a theme that we've been talking about for a little bit now. And it is about sharing, sharing the good news. So I want you to think about maybe something that you received this year as a special Christmas gift that you want to share about. What are those things that you want to share about? You don't have to share it with me right now. But I want you to feel in in that time of thinking, that excitement that you get about sharing what you received. Sharing it and saying, guess what I got? This is what I got for Christmas. Now, I want you to imagine yourself sharing that excitement, that same excitement of the special gift that you received about how you feel about Jesus. How do you feel about Jesus when you share about him? We're focusing today on sharing the good news, on bringing the good news to others, and going and telling it on the mountain, shouting it from the mountaintop, that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and that he loves us. How can we have the excitement of that special gift that we received, that same excitement, when we talk about Jesus? I want you to think about that today and the rest of the week. And then maybe next week you can tell me about the stories that you shared about Jesus. All right, let us pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for empowering us. Thank you for giving us excitement to learn more about you, to seek you more, and to share about you. God, help us to have loud voices, to share the good news of who you are, our Savior. God, be with us this week. Help us to stay safe And uh, thank you for bringing us through another year. It's in your precious and holy and loving name that we pray. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see these, this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God 
for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, St. John's. Good to see you. Um, Today, I just wanted to share a simple message that we are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Every year during the Advent season and Christmas, we, we read the birth, of story, the birth story of Jesus Christ so many times. The birth story was told from a couple of different uh, viewpoints. One of them is from the shepherds in the field. In those days, the shepherds um, were very low-class people. Mostly, shepherds are not the owner of the flock, but they just made a, a contract with the owners and brought the sheep to the field to feed them. So they had a responsibility to bring the sheep back safe. However, if there is a, a danger or a natural disaster, um, they could be uh, forgiven you know, some of the sheep, and, but not many sheep. Otherwise, they have to pay back their losses and uh, they lose to the owners of the flock. Uh, I want to tell you that the shepherds who heard the news of Jesus' birth from the angel was not, were not easy to visit the baby Jesus, especially at night. I guess they had to ask other shepherds to watch over their flock and went to Bethlehem to worship baby Jesus. Actually, they took the great risk to see what the angel told them. We Christians have an impression that shepherds are good and honest and have faith in God. We have that assumption because we have heard that Jesus is our good shepherd. So Jesus' image and the shepherd's image overlap. So when we hear the word shepherds, we have kind of good impression about them. However, the shepherds were actually called untrusty people and simple people because they often cheated the ship's owner to fill, fill up their pocket. They said, oh, there was coyote or lions in the field and they killed some of them, but actually not. They just hide some of them and then brought them into their house. And religiously, they could not keep the Sabbath because they have to be in the field, you know, feeding the sheep. Even though they knew each other, uh, trusting other shepherds was not easy because they did not know what will happen, especially at night. So they took the risk and met the baby Jesus. If there was no angel of God, they could not know of the birth of Savior, and they could not see the baby Jesus at all. And they could not be in the birth, the story of Jesus. As we have read and seen the many stories of Jesus' birth, we noticed an angel of God, especially uh, the Gabriel, angel Gabriel, showed up to people and delivers God's message. So there was a messenger And the people received God's words. So we humans need a medium to listen to the words of God, which deliver us God's salvation, God's message. Many people, including prophets, judges, kings, and disciples, and pastors, and missionaries, and evangelists, have long spread the word of God. In Hebrew culture, they mainly pass down God's words by their speaking words, by their language, rather than the words on the book. So they have a culture of passing God's words to one another. The prophet Isaiah mentioned a a verse that praises the messenger of God. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, 
who says to Zion, your God reigns. Isaiah 52, 7. And the writer of the Romans, the book of Romans, cited Isaiah 52, 7 to say about spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Let me read it for you. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim it? Uh, someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. These feet are the feet that bring light to those who are in darkness. A couple of years ago, I mentioned that I am standing here at St. John's as a pastor because of the seas that your ancestors seeded in Korean land. In 1885, on Easter Sunday morning, the first Protestant missionary named uh, Henry Appendular came into Korea. He was the first Methodist missionary to Korea. After him, there were many missionaries from uh, Methodist Church in uh, America. If you check the world uh, Christian history, you'll notice there was a um, huge explosion in Korea. The Korean church's growth was unusually rapid. That resulted from many missionaries who delivered good news to Korean people and followed by many dedicated believers. I'm the first generation of the believers in my family. You probably heard that most people who come to church as adults to believe in Jesus Christ they used to go to Sunday school when they are young, when they are little. We may not be able to see the result right away, but our children will see the result, result of what we spread out today. In fact, Pastor Appendler passed away not long after he came to Korea. He was wrecked in a storm while traveling to meet people to translate the English Bible to Korean. Actually, he, he could leave, but he wanted to save a Korean girl who was drowning. So he couldn't save her. No, he saved her, but he couldn't uh, save himself. It was only for seven years. He could not see the result of his work, but now he can see, we can see the result of his work. There is a biggest church in the world in Seoul and many mega churches in Korea. Sometimes we may think that sharing the good news of Jesus Christ is not working and it's not effective at all. However, it is working. This is what God wants us to do. 1 Corinthians one twenty one says that, For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. In humans' eyes, it may not work as much as we want, but our God is working through us. To me, the year 2020 was like walking on a mountain. It has been very challenging emotionally, mentally, and also physically too. And the situation has not been changed yet. However, St. John has been kept trying to share the good news, with, good news of Jesus Christ with our neighbors through the radio and online worship services, and also all of the uh, missional works we do. Today, I want to encourage all of you to continue to do the good works you have been doing. I'm sure that God will say these words to you. It is from Matthew 25. Well done, 
good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. I want to close my sermon today with the words from Matthew 28. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of age. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for calling us into your kingdom. Lord, we know that there were so many people who shared your love and grace until it comes to us. Lord, we are blessed. Gracious God, as you told us to share good news with others, let us share your love and peace. Still, there are many, so many people who do not know your love and sacrifice around us. Lord, let us be the light to those people. Lord, we praise you because of your love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born and brought us God's salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere go Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching For silent flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds fear and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hail our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. I said, Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. Go in peace. God will provide you strength and wisdom to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.